And please join me in welcoming Maria Abramson. Thank you. Yeah, that was great. Okay, let me change this setup here a little bit. Okay, great. Here's a clicker. So, I am actually not going to talk about the scientific breakthroughs today. Sometimes I do, but um, um, today I'm going to talk about something a little different related to um, curing aging, which is the mission that we are working on. I'm going to talk to you about uh, me for just for a little bit. I'm a singer, songwriter. I am a pilot. I do some modeling sometimes. I was going to wear that dress today, but I thought it was a little bit too much. Size. But, uh, and I am the Global Outreach Coordinator for Sense Research Foundation. We are a nonprofit organization co-founded by Dr. Aubrey de Grey. Raise your hands if you know who he is. Okay. Oh, a lot of you. Okay. So you know what we do. And for those of you who don't know, we um, are developing new biotechnologies to cure the diseases of aging. So this is uh, regenerative medicine. And... Well, um, I'm not going to talk about, the, as I said, the technology today. Basically, I want to talk about something that worries me a lot, which is after so many years of working for this mission to find how many people resist to the idea of getting aging under medical control, which is what we're trying to do, which it's not about immortality. It's basically about health. So age-related disease causes most of this worldwide. About 100,000 people die a day of aging, and 150,000 people die a day, so 100,000 die of aging. We not only die of aging, but we suffer a lot, and we get really, really sick as we age, and we're all going to get sick. All of you, all of us are going to get sick. And in the U.S., we spend more money on health in the last year of our lives than our whole life. And uh, we do that not to get cured because we're going to just get worse and, uh, and we know the rest. So we spend about $40,000 a second to treat people who are sick of aging, of the diseases of aging. And what we do today about aging is gerontology and geriatrics. That is what we've been doing for a long time. This is what medicine does. This is our paradigm. And we basically ameliorate the symptoms. But we have not cured any of the diseases that we get as we age, like Alzheimer's or cardiovascular disease, cancer, Parkinson's, osteoporosis, and the list goes on and on. We basically ameliorate the diseases. We extend life. We're extending life more and more now, but we keep people in very uh, ill health. So it's, uh, it's not good. It's not a good approach. Also, the, health, the healthcare system is not... Uh, you know, it's, it's unsustainable right now, and, it, and it's getting worse because of this, because we live longer, but we're very sick. So, you know, that's the main problem, basically. Aging, you know, it's, uh, it's that versus this, and uh, it's just about health. That's what we are concerned about. And we, we don't like to get sick. This is something that, I mean, one of the worst things that can happen to us is to get sick, isn't it? Well, this is what aging is, is basically accumulation of damage in our bodies until we you know cross a certain threshold of the damage that starts getting us sick and uh, you know we hear oh this is very slow okay we hear all these things about aging in a healthy way uh, successful aging I was uh, talking to someone the other day and they gave me that term there is not such a thing as um, a successful aging or health aging in a healthy way, sorry, I wanted to let you know that, you know, all the, uh, the things in the list, sorry, I'm messing up a little bit here, all those things that we have in this list that comes really, really slowly are good, and I, I advise everybody to do them, because, you know, eating healthy, exercising, sleeping well, all this is great, but no matter what we do, I swear I'm pressing the button, but it's not working, um, no matter what we do, and no matter who we are, no matter how powerful we are, how you know, wealthy we are or beautiful, if we live long enough, we're all gonna go through this, and this, and this, and this. And in fact, if we live long, long, long enough, 
we are all going to experience these wonderful diseases, all of them. And uh, well, actually, we're probably going to be really lucky that one of them is going to kill us first. And uh, that, that is supposed to be a joke, but I, I don't deliver it really well, so <laughs> people don't laugh. So basically, it's a, it's a loose, loose situation, right? The rest is history. Um, so aging, as I said before, is accumulation of damage at a cellular and molecular level. And this depletes our health. So there are many, many uh, solutions that we can um, apply to aging the, of regenerative medicine. Sorry, I don't know. This is going crazy. Okay. And, uh, you know, you've heard of stem cells and gene therapy and uh, tissue engineering, organ printing. All these things are advancing really, really fast. Our disciplines that are incredible and that are accelerating every day. And what we need to do is to put them to work towards uh, the problem of aging. And also, we need funding to do this. And uh, this is the National Institutes of Health funding per year. And uh, the... Um, you know, the um, yellow circle is the total budget. The 4% of that, that is the green portion, is what is used for the National Institute on Aging. And that's basically, you know, what we're talking about before, gerontology and geriatrics. And only 1% of that 4% is looking into understanding the biology of aging and doing something about it, about, uh, you know, what we were, we were talking about before, cleaning or repairing the damage in our bodies to prevent these diseases. So when we get sick, we don't like that, and we go to the doctor, right? So we've... We've accepted medicine, but we've also accepted getting sick as we get old. For some reason, that's, well, for some reason, because it always happened, right? So we accept it. We get old, we get sick, you know, you see someone sick that is old and you think, well, you know, of course he's going to have a heart attack, he's old. And we're totally fine with it. But things are changing. So... Okay, again, so what we talk about here is disease. We like a lot of things about aging, like, you know, wisdom and experience that we accumulate. That's wonderful. But getting sick is not cool. So why people resist the concept of curing aging? This is what, I, what frustrates me uh, many, many years working in the field, especially uh, my work, which is mm, a lot of it is fundraising and... Um, People choose to spend their money on anything else, but they resist to the concept of curing aging. You know, people say, but, you know, what happens to us is natural. So we need to think about this when we say natural. What is natural? Is it hip replacement natural? Is it a pacemaker natural? A cochlear implant? Is it flying natural? All these things that we do that are not natural, right? So why is aging different? Why we cannot interfere with that? We have made a lot of changes in the history of humankind that, you know, changed what's natural. So, whoops. Mm, sorry, help. I don't know what happened. Oh, let me see. Maybe I can fix it here. It went away. It went away. So this is a partial, thank you, this is a partial list of the things that I hear from people. Um, it's, it's very scary for a lot of people. A lot of people say one of the common things is, you know, extended geriatric condition. People think that we're going to extend life and they're going to be alive in, ba in a very bad state and uh, in a wheelchair until they are 300 years old. We're not talking about that. We're talking about keeping people healthy and strong and young. Uh, people say, I'll be bored, or without an ending, there's no purpose. Well, I understand a lot of people, you know, have other issues, of, you know, they're bored. If they're going to be bored in the future, they're probably bored anyway, now. <laughs> but uh, one of the things that um, I want to discuss here quickly, because we don't have a lot of time, is uh, the world is getting worse, that I hear a lot. People are concerned about our population, and popular culture is at the bottom. So... Why do we think the world is getting worse? You know, you hear that a lot. Um, 
Well, the news feed us all the time with very negative things, and um, our minds instinctively pay attention to that because that's that's um, you know because of fear and survival is something that we do naturally, and of course, if we pay attention to that, you know, that equals ratings. So basically. We get a lot of information, and uh, nothing is more important to us than survival. So we pay attention to the, the stuff that is scary. And you know, the first stop of all this, this th the things that happen around us is in the amygdala, that is in the temporal lobe. And it's, this part of our brain is in charge to monitors, monitor constantly what's happening around us. And if it senses there's something dangerous, it sends a signal to our body that uh, makes our body to go into fight or flight mode, which I'm sure you've heard of that. And, you know, so our rational brain takes a break and we only fixate on negative stuff. And if you think about it, when you watch the news, uh, most of the stuff is just negative. It's about how the world is getting worse and worse. So we think the world is getting worse, but the world is not getting worse, really. <laughs> We're going to look at it a little bit. Poverty rates have been declining. The global poverty rate has been cut in half in 20 years. It declined more in the past 50 years than in the previous 500 years. Crime rates have been declined drastically, have declined drastically. Violent crime victimization since 1994 down to 71% and 12 to 24 years old down to 78%. That's really good news. More people have access to education than ever before. That tells me the world is getting better. Mobile phones, 100% market penetration in most countries. Many people have even more than one phone. Human rights. I mean, discrimination used to be the norm only a few decades ago. Same thing with women's rights. Women's right. We couldn't even vote, for God's sakes. And healthcare, still a big problem because, you know, mainly because of the expense of people who are aging and, and, and are getting these super expensive treatments and transplants and therapies that are only maybe extending their lives for a few more months, and that's it. But however, we're living longer and healthier than ever before. Many, many poor, more positive changes, like, you know, poorest Americans today have access to running water, phones, computers, the internet, AC, even cars. Today, this is a very interesting piece of information that I, I took from Peter Diamandis. Today, a Maasai warrior in Kenya with a smartphone using Google has access to more information than the President of the United States had 15 years ago. The world is advancing and, you know, how technology is growing so fast. We are working on solving our problems. We always done that and especially now more and more as we we have more resources and more technology the other thing that worries people a lot is about overpopulation and mm, basically population growth is driven by fertility it's not driven by when people die if they die earlier or later and fertility rates happen to you know be dropping they've, they've been dropping drastically um, this is a, I don't have a lot of time to explain it, but this is a map that basically shows the all the blues, the blue area shows uh, people having one to two ch children. And this, since 1970 to 2014, how it has changed drastically. And, and the red colors and the brighter colors are, you know, people having four to five children, five to six, seven, eight, etc. So, yes, we're still... Uh, putting more people on the planet every day, but we are putting less people every day on the planet. So this is changing, and they expect it to actually start dropping by 2040, 2045. So what is it about people who seek rejuvenation or life extension that we always, we always see them as evil, you know? We depict them as the villains, or they need to be punished. They're you know, scary, it's bad. If you want to live longer, if you want to stay young, if you want to stay, uh, you know, basically, if you want to stay young, it's, it's, you know, if you see someone who is older and is dressing like a younger person, you can criticize the person. We have this in our culture, in our popular culture, that is, is, is seen as a bad thing. It's seen as greedy, you want to live longer. 
So we've always been promised one fountain of youth or another, and we never found it. So we have this ingrained in us. It's always been fake. We've prom been promised by religion, you know, perpetual life, eternal life by religion. Like Christian Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. This we find in virtually every religion. Every religion talks to us about eternal life. The snake oil salesman, the elixir of life. We became skeptics. We think that's impossible because it has never happened. We've always aged and we always died of it, always. But things are changing now and this is what people don't know. And they're scared, they don't wanna think about it, but things are changing. We've accomplished a lot of things that seemed impossible, just like this seems impossible. A lot of things that look like impossible or like even science fiction before. Well, this is amazing. We have to be careful how we use it, but I mean, created a nuclear chain reaction. We're capable of anything. Look at the technology we have around us. Yeah, I love this one. And um, all these things and so many more that were once inimaginable. And this change that we're gonna make now that is going to happen. I mean, aging is going to be controlled and cured and eradicated. It's just a matter of time. And this is why we're working so hard. People like me were trying to make it happen before because it's just a matter of just getting our minds together and agreeing about it to make it happen earlier. It will happen, but it will take time if we don't, if we don't want it. So technology is exponential. So before this era, era, the promises of stopping aging were not real. But science promises this now. And we believe in science, right? That's what we were saying before. We all go to the doctor, or most of us. We trust science. And now it's not snake oil. It's scientists who are telling us that they realize that they can do something about it. So we're not pursuing this the way we should. The system is not uh, aligned to that. So this is how we spend our money. I think I have a little time I have to end soon, but basically it's not, it's not zero minutes, yes. It's not a problem uh, of money, obviously, because look at how we spend money. So we have the money. Anyway, we know that science has arrived, that snake oil salesmen are being replaced by scientists. We have the ability to shift our popular culture. Dracula is an old story, and we know we have the money if we choose to spend it on this. So our future is hopeful. All right, a few things you can do. Be a vocal proponent, donate, encourage your friends. Look up for projects, because this is also gonna be a good business. Stay connected to each other, and if you have any questions, come to me, talk to me, I'm gonna stick around. I think I went over my time a little bit, so there's no time for questions here, but you can find me around if you wanna know more about this. But this is a good thing, okay? It's a good thing. Thank you so much.